Hey there guys, my name is Rick Utzer here with Ergon Web, your home for old school air gun reviews where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today we're going to take a look at an old school air gun. And actually it's not an old air gun, it's just an old school air gun. This is the new Seneca Dragonfly Mark II. Now, if you guys, and, and this is going to date some folks, if you go back to the Benjamin Sheridan, it was wood, it was solid, it was a performing son of a gun air gun. People love that thing. And then it sort of went away. And, there's been some people that have tried to replace it, and frankly, it just it, it doesn't fit. I mean, this is what I think we've been waiting for. It's solid, well-built, it's sturdy, it's a wood stock, it's a multi-pump, it's got a ton of things going for it, and it's got some features that the Sheridan didn't have. For example, right out of the gate, you can put a scope on it. You couldn't do that with the Sheridan without having to jump through some hoops. Looks like we got a little rain coming in. We may have to call this, but we'll see how it goes here. Um, it's got a threaded muzzle, so if you want it a little quieter, you can make that happen. It's got a fairly nice trigger. It's breaking right around 3 pounds 10 ounces, 3 pounds 11 ounces, right in that sort of range. As far as the thing that really sets this apart is that it's super easy to pump. It's got the new Dragonfly system, and we're going to get to that. When you guys see me pump this gun, you're going to see why I like it so much. It's from pump 1 to pump 10 or pump 15. The effort is the same, which is very, very cool. You don't really get that in other multi-pumps, so that's very, very unique to this gun. Um, and we are getting some rain. Can we hold out? Let's see if it'll blow over. We're gonna, we're gonna try and go through this, and I need to rush the camera gear in real fast. We'll, we'll see if we gotta do it. We're gonna give it a shot. All right, so some of the numbers that you need to know. We've talked about trigger pull. Let's talk about noise. So. You can pump this up to 15 times. So I measured noise at 5, 10, and 15 pumps with a pellet. And at 5 pumps, you're looking at 99. It's like 98.9, so I rounded it up. Um, so 99 dB. At 10 pumps, you're looking at right around 105 dB. And then at 15 pumps, you're like at 103. I think it's like 102.9. Again, I just rounded up. So it does make more noise the more energy you're making out of this gun. Now the next thing we really want to do is sit down and just put some pellets through it to see what we're going to get for velocity. Are we going to have a wide range of velocity depending on, you know, uh, how many pumps we get? Well, the whole point of a multi-pump is that you can vary the power output by the number of pumps. And I think we're going to have to call it, it is raining now, really raining, and we got more coming. So uh, we're going to scrap this and we'll be back. <laughs> hopefully soon. See ya. So let's go ahead and do some crony numbers now. And this being a multi-pump, we can vary what kind of power we want. So if you're basement shooting, say you want to plink in your basement or something, there's a lot of people that do that. I used to have a 10 meter range in my garage. It went from the boat bay to the front of the garage. So I could shoot indoors anytime I wanted. So if you want to do that kind of thing, maybe you only want to pump it up five times. What kind of velocity will you get there? Uh, if you're going to you know, plink in the backyard, maybe you go 10. If you want to make sure you have maximum power to take small game, maybe you go 15. So let's go ahead and sit down. We're using the 1589s today, and we'll see what we get at 5, 10, and 15. And I'm only going to do one shot per because it's a lot of work for me <laughs> right now. So hopefully you guys will, you know, just take that for what it is. It is very consistent, and when we do our accuracy test, we'll do We'll pump it up 10 times for each shot, and you'll see there that it is very consistent with its accuracy. So let's go ahead and sit down, and we're going to get started uh, getting some crony numbers. Now, real quick, the weather is great right now. We've got good light. Hopefully our crony will continue to work. If for whatever reason it conks out on us while we're wrapping this up, I'll make sure to put all the relevant data underneath so you guys can see it. We'll, we'll definitely get you good, accurate data, whether that gets it right now or I have to get it tomorrow or whenever. We'll make sure you have good, accurate data here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'll go ahead and do five, five pumps, and so we'll just get our crony number here for this. So again, 1589s. Okay. 556. So there you go. That is five pumps, 556. That's about what I get. So let's go ahead and do 10 pumps now. Six hundred thirty-six. Okay, so what is it, about 80? About 80 FPS different. Now, let's go 15 and let's see how much of a difference it makes. See if it's really going to be worth it. 
677. Okay, so about 40 feet per second, maybe 41 feet per second difference. Personally, um, that's not enough increase to make those all that extra work worth it to me. <laughs> maybe it is to you, but for me, it's not. So that's why I think 10 pumps is the optimal. Um, and so let's go ahead and get some accuracy now. Go ahead and load up our mag. The way the mag works is you rotate it around and drop one in backwards and then fill it as you close the lid. There's a bunch of magazines that work that way. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and shoot for accuracy now. We're gonna take seven shots. We're gonna pump this up 10 times between each shot. And we'll see how we do. I'm gonna stand up and pump this just cause it's a little bit easier for me. Okay, let's do this. A little bit right. 630. Now I know I'm, I've mentioned that I had heart surgery like literally two weeks ago. I can guarantee you <laughs> that if this didn't have the, that new that new system, the new pumping system in there. There's no way, there's no way I could be doing this video. Okay. 636. Even though the trigger's a little bit heavy, it has a very distinct first and second stage. So that first stage and you get to the wall, the next little bit is very crisp. There's no creep in the second stage, which to me, even though it's a little heavier than I'd like, makes it perfectly acceptable. Ooh, boy, that one really went low. 633. Okay. Six hundred twenty-eight. Okay. Six hundred thirty-eight. Okay. Got a little bit of a string there, a little bit of a vertical string. 600. Okay. It didn't register that last shot. We may be starting to get too dark. But so far, extreme spread 17, the standard deviation is six. That's not bad in a multi-pump. You hear I'm a little bit out of breath, I apologize. I think we need to try a different pellet. I'm wondering, um, if the 18s would be a little bit more consistent. So I'm gonna put these 16s away. I'm gonna grab the 18s, reset my camera on a different target, and we're gonna try the 18s. And I'll take a shot, and then I'll just use mill dots from there. Be right back. Okay. We were shooting a little bit right too, so that could easily be adjusted. Ooh! Really wanted to go for a ride there, didn't it? That could certainly be adjusted uh, simply with a scope adjustment. Once you've dialed in and know what pellets you're going to be shooting all the time, every day, then just dial it in for that pellet. Okay. Seven shots. All right, let's go ahead and get this pumped up. I'm going to try to go use a different arm. <laughs> One. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take a shot and then adjust from there. A 606. Bit, a little bit high. You know, given that it was stringing on me, I'm, I'm gonna use that same hold, so we're just gonna go with that. Okay, we're getting about the same energy, so that was 14.76 foot-pounds, which is about what we were getting, maybe just a fraction more than we were getting with the 15.89s. All right, here we go. Okay. 606. All right, here we go. 
Shot number three. Now, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Six hundred five. Excellent. Six hundred four. Six hundred nine. Six hundred four. One more. Six hundred six. Okay. Um, I think it did much better with the 1813s. I'm gonna go grab that target and we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Okay guys, very, very cool results here. Really quickly on that last group. Um, extreme spread was five. So it likes the heavier pellets better, doesn't it? And our standard deviation was two. I think the 1813s are the way to go with this gun. So if you're looking for this, I know the 1813s are kind of a premium pellet, but if you want good results, Sometimes you gotta buy better ammo, and the 1813 certainly did a great job here. Let's look at our targets here. So our 1589s, um, actually I'm, I'm running a 16 power scope, and at 20 yards, the groups look like that. Um, you know, in all reality, minus the flyer, and that could have just been a bent skirt or who knows what. That isn't bad, I mean, you know, we're not talking about a super expensive gun here. We're talking about an affordable gun that is really producing, I think, some really good results. Good energy, I mean, 14, almost 15 foot-pounds is pretty doggone good. Um, there's a collared dove right over there, and it doesn't know that I could very easily load a pellet and end its life, but I'm not going to do that. Um, anyway, and it just flew away, so maybe it did know. So 15.89s minus the flyer, I thought, you know, as I'm looking at it now, not bad. Looking through the scope, 16 power at 20, 21 yards, um, the groups look huge, but reality, that's not too bad. Now we switch over to the 1813s, and granted, we could move this into the center with a scope adjustment, but I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, I had one, the very last shot, kind of go to the left a little bit, else that would have been a 3 8 group, maybe. Um, as it is now, it's probably around half inch or ish or so, maybe a little over half inch center to center. But that isn't bad out of an affordable air gun that doesn't need anything but elbow grease and pellets, and you can make this thing work for you. To me, I think that's super cool. Again, this is a throwback, as far as I'm concerned, to the good old days of air gunning. My dad had a Benjamin Sheridan. Having something that's sort of back in that sort of space again, I think is, is really, really cool. Uh, I, we, we've been missing this in the market for quite a while with this new additional way that you can cock the gun and it doesn't take so much energy to, to pump it up between each shot, man, that just changes everything. Again, um, I, I, I keep saying it, but I had open heart surgery. There's no way that I'd been able to do this um, if it didn't have that, that new cocking system. It just, it would have been too hard. I would have had to, you know, would have been a couple more months for me to do this kind of a, re of a review with something that didn't have that cocking system. So. I think that's a testimony to this thing really, really does work. So I know I say that a lot, but it impressed me, guys. I'm trying to make that point note that it really did impress me with how easy it was to use. And we've been out here shooting and I've shot this a lot today and I'm fine, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go do some more. So guys, I hope you guys have liked the video. Um, definitely, I wanna say thank you to Pyramid Air for sponsoring Ergon Web. This video, a lot of videos, again, I've mentioned that um, they've been with me since 2009. I've been working with those guys and they've been part of what has been going on here for a very, very long time. So I want to say a super huge thank you to Pyramid Air. If you like anything you see here, I'll have links to it in the video description and you can go pick it up. And if you buy from Pyramid Air, please let them know that Rick sent you their way. So guys, that's going to be it. My name is Rick Kutzer here with Airgun Web. You're home for old school Airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.